Good evening, I'm Prasad and this is Kini News. The court cluster is shaping up to be a prison cluster. Just one week after Najib Abdul Razak was sent to prison, his wife is one step closer to prison too. Rosma Manso has been found guilty on all three charges linked to the 1.25 billion ringgit solar hybrid energy project. Trial judge Mohamed Zaini Mazlan ruled that the defence had failed to raise reasonable doubt in the prosecution's case. He added that Rosma's defence was unsubstantiated, bare denial and devoid of credible evidence. The court then evaded for Rosma's defence to submit mitigation for a more lenient sentence. Following the verdict, Rosma addressed the court while sobbing. She said she is very sad about the verdict today but respects the court's decision. Rosma also said she always told her lawyers to only speak the truth and thought her children this as well. In tears, she added that she has never taken for herself a single cent in the millions of funds in Pramata and Bhakti in which she was involved. Rosma can still appeal. This is why she won't be going to prison today. However, the sentence appears to have left her shaken. Rosma Manso has been sentenced to 10 years in jail and 970 million ringgit fine in lieu of another 30 years in prison. This is after the wife of former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak was convicted over three graft charges linked to the 1.25 billion ringgit solar hybrid project. However, the sentence can stay pending an appeal to the Court of Appeal. Earlier, Deputy Public Prosecutor Gopal Sri Ram sought the maximum penalty or near maximum penalty. Meanwhile, defence lawyer Jagjit Singh mitigated for a lenient sentence, citing Rosma's contribution to society and being a first-time offender, among other reasons. The council then suggested a prison time of one day among other lenient sentences that may be meted out to Rosma. Rosma muttered to herself, might as well kill me in the dock while listening to the prosecution's oral submission, seeking a long jail term and heavy fine against her. Rosma also claimed that she was a victim in the solar case as the actual perpetrators are still out there. While even Najib is in prison, Jolo is nowhere near Kajang. All we know is, while Najib was going to court, he was allegedly at Disneyland. Fugitive Jolo was allegedly photographed in Disneyland Shanghai on Christmas Eve 2019. This was according to journalists Tom Wright and Bradley Hope. They launched a campaign to unravel more on Lo right after former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak was jailed. According to the duo's YouTube video on Wednesday, they claim to have received many tip-offs that suggest Lo has been lying low in China in recent years. Bradley Hope said Lo has been wandering around shopping malls, sitting in Shanghai Disneyland and is always carrying many phones. Although the man in the photograph looked remarkably similar to Joe Lo, Malaysia Kini cannot independently verify Tom Wright and Bradley Hope's claim. The duo added that Lo was held in China because of the risk of him divulging embarrassing information about China's involvement in Najib era Belt and Road projects in Malaysia. China has reportedly denied allegations that they were harboring Lo. The duo have been chasing Lo's story in connection with the 1MDB affair since 2015. They also said Lo was currently living in China with his wife and two kids. Lo had allegedly offered to pay the Malaysian government 1.5 billion ringgit as part of a settlement to drop charges against him. Putrajaya has rejected the offer. He is also facing several criminal charges in the US. Lokman Nur Adam, one of Najib's staunchest supporters, wants Amno to act against Isma Sabri Yaakob. Former Amno Supreme Council member Lokman Nur Adam has urged his party to take disciplinary action against Isma Sabri Yaakob. Ini ada dalam perjanjian dan ini bukti jelas bahawa beliau telah campur tangan dalam urusan mahkamah, telah campur tangan dalam menggunakan jabatan peguam negara. Speaking to reporters outside the Kuala Lumpur court complex today, he made several allegations over the purported league agreement between the Prime Minister and Perikata National. Lokman accused Isma Sabri of agreeing not to replace the current Attorney General and maintain the current cabinet team in addition to retaining Bersatu and past leaders at GLCs. He also claimed that the Prime Minister agreed in writing to expedite the criminal court cases involving former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak and UMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi. Copies of the purported agreement made rounds back in July. However, it only leaked points 1 to 6 and straight jumped to point 10, leaving out those in between. In the unverified document, PN pledged the support for Ismail Sabri as Prime Minister and in return, Bersatu was to be given the post of Deputy Prime Minister, with Muhyiddin Yassin made Minister Mentor. 
The allegations look one level above were claimed to be part of the agreement signed between Isma Sabri and PN. Lokman is due to be charged at the Sessions Court today for allegedly uploading offensive videos against Isma Sabri on his Facebook page. The police released a statement yesterday stating Lokman will be charged under Section 233, Bracket 1 of the Communications and Multimedia Act. If found guilty, Lokman will be slapped with a fine not exceeding 50,000 ringgit or a jail term of not more than one year or both. When Lukman was charged today, his lawyer requested for a reduced bail because he does not have a stable income as a satay seller. Former UMNO Supreme Council member Lukman Nur Adam has claimed trial to two charges of making offensive communications against Prime Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob and the government. Lukman, who pleaded not guilty, was accused of making the offending remarks on Facebook with the intent of annoying others. Both charges were framed under Section 233 bracket 1A of the Communications and Multimedia Act. According to the charge sheets, the offending remarks were made in videos where Lokman railed against Isma Sabri and the government over the handling of former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak's SRC International Final Appeal. Burnama reported that the prosecution asked for the bail to be set at 15,000 ringgit for each charge. However, Lokman's lawyer asked for 2,000 ringgit bail for each charge on the grounds that Lokman, who now works as a satay seller, did not have a stable income, with 11 children of schooling age to look after. Judge Norasnia Razak set bail at 8,000 ringgit for each charge and issued a gag order against Lokman from commenting on the case on social media. Pass has reminded Amno that they're only in power because of Bursatu and that friends should stick together. Amno would not be in the federal government if not for Bursatu. This is according to past Deputy President Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man. He said Amno should not forget friends who put the party in power. He added that friends should stick together through thick and thin, including the general election. Speaking at the launch of the past youth wing's Muktama in Kedah today, he said political cooperation should not be temporary. For the record, PAS is part of the Muafaka National Pact with AMNO. Thai strain after PAS joined the Bersatulat Perikata National Coalition. PAS even contested in the Malacca and Johor by elections under the PN ticket. Meanwhile, Tuan Ibrahim said PN component parties have started talking about seat allocations for the general election and it would be finalised after discussions. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.